Hi guys, welcome back. Well, the street jaw chuck on my progress lead. I think it's a decent quality one. The sticker's long gone, but I'm presuming it's a Bernard. So, uh, I've not done anything with this. This is original equipment that came with the lathe. Um, but I've been having a look at it and it's, um, I think the jaws are in need of some, uh, some refreshment. I don't think you can make out the three gouges that are in this face. The cutting tool, possibly a boring bar, has caught them sometime in the past. And, uh, opening the jaws up. They are getting a bit worn on the outer tip. Yeah, and up, opening it up, it, you can see that the jaws are a bit worn on this bit on this outer side. So let's see if we can do something with them. There's a, just a small bit of the gouge left on this uh, number two jaw, and uh, also just a touch on the number one. But I can live with that. I don't want to take the jaw down any more than I have done. But uh, certainly looking a lot better than they were, and presumably by taking some of the surface off the top it's reduced the bird mouth effect on uh, the part where the jaws clamp still looks slightly wider at this top than the rest but uh, the top of the jaws look a lot better now All right, let's put them back in the chuck
Well guys, I've just spent over an hour watching videos on YouTube of uh, gentlemen grinding the chuck jaws. And uh, people do seem to get the knickers in a twist over it. Um, I'll go into that in a bit more detail shortly. But first of all, I'm going to see what the run out is before I do anything with these jaws. Now I've got these two parallel shank moist tape adapters and these have been ground so presumably these uh, are pretty good. Now I've got two different um, sizes. I've got the smallest one mounted up first. Uh, so this indicator is reads half a thou, so let's see what we'll run out we get with this. All I've done at the moment is ground the, the, the three jaw, uh, surfaces on the uh, on the face of the jaws. I've not done anything with the gripping jaws itself, so. Well that's, uh, that's moving three increments on the dial, so it was a half throw per increment, that's one and a half throw out. Now for a 50, 60 year old lathe, I don't think that's bad. I've been, as I said, I've been watching videos and people are getting more run out than that after they have ground the jaws. If you can see the dial there guys, let me see if I can swap it around. I think you can make that out. Now presumably there's an optimum diameter for the jaws to grip. Let me just take that off, show you what I mean. Because the three jaws don't come to a a point um, when you close the jaws and they form a perfect circle, I'm thinking that is that is the optimum diameter to get a full grip from the jaws. And looking at this, I don't think that that piece is far off. Now the larger one when you when you open the jaws up to accept that piece what I'm thinking is that 
it's only going to be the, the two outer points on the jaw that grip the workpiece. The dead centre won't be actually touching the workpiece. If you understand what I'm getting at there. Anyway, let's let's try to see what run out we've got on this one. Yeah, there's a lot more on that. Try it in a slightly different position. Right, that's from 0, so we've got 5, 10, 15, 20. So that's um, 10 thou, 10 thou out with a larger piece. Now, I'm not experienced enough to know if that's the uh, most taper adapter that's out or it's because the jaws have opened up to a greater diameter I don't know um, as I say people do seem to get the knickers in a twist when you see people grinding jaws um, what I'm going to do let me just bring the camera down Sorry for the movement there guys. I have got this Jacobs Rubberflex collet chuck. But uh, it uh, will fit onto this lathe on the spindle nose. There's a, the spindle itself is a one and a half inch maximum diameter. And the collets that I've got for this chuck, I think that's one and a half inch is the largest one. And then they go down to a to a quarter inch one. I think there I think there's a quarter inch tolerance on each one and I've got all the ones in between. So I've not counted but you can see how many jaws that's the grip the workpiece on the largest one. The smallest one has one, two, three that's six, six jaws. So it's double the number that's in the uh, the three jaw chuck. But I've not counted those, but it's uh, it's certainly more than three. So I'm going to swap swap the chuck over for this Jacobs, and we'll do the same test on these two uh, two bars, and see what um, what the difference is. Well, guys, I've just been watching the footage that I uh, filmed of checking this adapter, and. Uh, when you, when you watch the video you can actually see the original centre hole that's been drilled when it was manufactured you could actually see how far of uh, concentric it was and you could actually see the stylus on the uh, dial gauge moving so um, I just want to check it again couldn't believe you could actually see uh, stylus moving that far now I don't know 
I don't know if I had any chips on the jaws or, or what, but I'd just like to check it again. Yeah, looking at it from this angle, when the workpiece is fully in and you tighten the chuck up, you can actually see a gap through where the bone mounding has occurred. So the jaws are only gripping sort of, I should say, three quarters of the way out from inside the chuck. You can actually see a gap gap in between there. Well this is the one I tried previously. I've also got a larger piece. This is a larger adapt largest adapter that I've got so I'm going to try that one as well. Let's, uh, let's get this back on. I noticed you couldn't see the the needle pretty well on the previous test with the glare of the lights. Hopefully that will show up a bit better. I think this one was showing 10 power was it? I think it was 10. No, it's the same guys, it's going up to 20, so still 10 thou. Hmm, don't know. Let's try this larger one. This will go fully into the chuck, the diameter of this. No, not quite, so... Hmm. We're almost... Yeah, I think we're touching the... Uh, the back side of the jaw, so... Yeah, you can still see you can still see that the outer face of the jaws are not touching the work. Let's have a look at this one. You not want to clear the jaw? Yeah just. That's even greater, guys. That 
counts 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, yeah that's 25 so that's 12 and a half. Now I don't know if the chuck is getting less accurate the wider the jaws open or not. Right guys I've got the chuck body mounted but I just want to mention the um, three jaw. If you remember it had the um, bell mounting on the three jaws where the, um, the very tip of the jaws had worn down. Now if you put in a large piece of work in and it goes in the full width of the jaws I don't think the bell mounting would be much of a problem but the problem arises if you want to face off some thinner work that isn't going to the full depth of the jaws it's only being gripped by the very outer edges of them and then that's when the bell mouthing might be a problem now with a collet chuck the, uh, the idea is that uh, the work was in the full, full depth of the um, collet itself and then as it's clamped down all these jaws clamp down evenly onto the workpiece. Now with the Jacobs there is a way around that um, they come with these rubber adapters where if you've got a piece of work that only goes in say halfway the depth of the collet the idea is you put one of these um, bungs in and then as the chuck's tightened up you get an even pressure on the face of the collet but also on the back as well on these bungs so that's one way of uh, holding smaller pieces in a collet right Which one am I trying? Well that's going up to three guys, so that's one and a half thousand. So it's a slight improvement on the chuck, so I'm just uh, wondering if it's worth messing with the um, with the three jaw. There's only a slightly greater capacity with the three jaw than there is with this collet chuck, so. I don't think there's a lot to be gained from it. Let me try adjusting that.
you can see there guys with the glare on it let's see if I can move it around a touch Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, there's about one and a half flow on that, guys. Well, guys, back to the three jaw. I'm just wondering if any of you out there have got any experience of how the jaws are grown when they're manufactured and how the, uh, what process they use. From what I've seen on the videos, I think the Agreement is that the three jaws should be pre-loaded uh, in the closed position. I have seen seen people using external rings um, that go on the outer face of the jaws, but then I'm not sure if that takes into account any player that's in the scroll when they're uh, when in, when they're in the open position. Um, I can see the thinking behind having them in the close position and preloaded, because that's the position they'll be in when you put the workpiece in. Um, I've also seen people putting three machined identical pieces in these chamfered parts on the jaws, and then closing the, the chuck up, so it is preloaded in the close position. I don't know. Um, if I did make three identical identical pieces that went in the shumpers, close the jaw up. What about then running a a correct size reamer down the center of them, and then hopefully that would eradicate the uh, bell mouthing. Well, I don't want to get my uh, ball stewed, guys, by doing it the wrong way. So, if you have any experience or any ideas, please let me know in the comments and uh, what you think and is the correct way of doing these. At the moment, I'm I'm not too concerned about it. Now I've got the three faces machined up. I'm quite happy with that. And now I know how much run out there is on the chuck itself. I'm not too concerned about that. So. Yeah, let me know guys, see what, let's see what you think about it. Thanks for watching.